the Jedi Master and Council Member Obi-Wan Kenobi was a symbol of the old Jedi Order, following the Jedi Code to his exact words, and almost always remaining in the path of the light. But upon one tragic journey to the planet of Mandalore, Obi-Wan somehow managed to restrain his anger and vengeance. After receiving a desperate transmission from Duchess Satine, reporting that the renegade Sith Maul had taken over the planet, the Jedi Master ventured on his own, as the Jedi were reluctant to intervene in what was supposedly a neutral planet. Obtaining armour from a super commando, he manages to free Satine and reach the docks before they are captured by Maul's forces. In the throne room of what was once Satine's palace, Obi-Wan refused to give in to his anger, and watched as the Duchess is impaled by Maul's dark saber. Although Obi-Wan was greatly saddened by the loss of Satine, it would take till well after the end of the Clone War for Obi-Wan to avenge all the pain that Maul had inflicted. But what if Obi-Wan had given in to his anger and turned to the dark side after the death of Satine? How would this affect the Jedi Order? Would it help Dooku or Sidious? As you shall discover, Obi-Wan's dramatic turn would have consequences across the galaxy. The Jedi Master held the body of Duchess Satine in his arms, and Maul was enjoying his suffering. As he heard Satine breathe for the final time, Maul ordered for Obi-Wan to be taken away and let him rot in prison, but as the Jedi Master looked up, Maul sensed something different from his old foe. Obi-Wan was lit with a previously caged level of anger, and all of his Jedi teachings and principles had been destroyed. With his pain at the death of Satine and hate for Maul, Obi-Wan force choked the arresting super commandos, cracking their necks before lighting his blade. Maul dismissed the services of the arriving guards, as he and Savage ignited their own lightsabers. With his hate, Obi-Wan unleashed his new dark side powers, slicing off Savage's arm then knee, emitting Night Sister magic into the air. Maul countered Obi-Wan's attacks with his dark saber, but Obi-Wan managed to find a way around Maul to fatally stab Savage in his chest. The former Jedi Council member let out an inhumane laugh, then stopped as they heard Bo-Katan and her night owls emerging to rain chaos on the city. Obi-Wan left Maul to tend to his brother and leapt away to his ship, wondering where he should go next. An incoming transmission from Coruscant is dispelled by Kenobi, as he despised the Jedi for failing to keep both Qui-Gon and Satine alive, and decided to head for the home planet of Dooku and Sereno. The new dark side user wondered if the offer from Geonosis still stood, and together they could perhaps defeat the Sith. Landing by the Count's vast palace, Dooku stepped out and ignited his blade in caution, but lowered it at the sight of Obi-Wan. The sickly yellow eyes of Obi-Wan prompted a grin from Dooku, as he could become a powerful ally and even an apprentice to replace Asajj Ventress. As his master was occupied on Mandalore with Maul, Obi-Wan completed an ancient Sith ritual, preventing any of the secrets held by the Sith leaking out, and the mind of the former Jedi was suddenly invaded by knowledge. Obi-Wan collapsed in surprise, as he was still getting used to the surge in power that the dark side had given him, and Dooku knew that his apprentice required more training. The master of Tyrannus had been dueling Maul, and as he had found the corpse of Savage, he saw Maul was furious. The two former master and apprentice ignite their blades, but Maul was soon outmatched by the Dark Lord of the Sith, as he fell to the floor beside his brother, begging for mercy. Sidious enjoyed torturing the Zabrak, but he sensed a greater fear in him than just his presence, and he needed to know what was causing this disturbance in the Force. Back on the planet of Coruscant, Anakin and several of the Jedi Council stood around the hollow table with concern. Their repeated transmissions to Obi-Wan had been met with silence, and Anakin insists completing a search of the airspace above Mandalore. Yoda grants Anakin the permission to take the 501st Legion to investigate alongside his Padawan Ahsoka Tano, but as Yoda entered his quarters alongside Master Windu, they sensed something darker was occurring. Together they meditated, and they discovered that the Force Presence of Obi-Wan was not on their radar, so now they think that Obi-Wan was in the hands of the Sith. Yoda takes his personal shuttle, flying into the dangerous Separatist territory to find answers to the disappearance of Obi-Wan, but he found nothing until he received a transmission from Bo-Katan, who had captured Maul. Yoda swoops to the surface of Mandalore and approaches the cell with the dangerous Maul, where the Zabrak reveals that he had seen Obi-Wan imbued by the dark side after he had killed Satine, then left the planet. 
Yoda was faced with the reality that the Jedi could have lost another council member to the dark side when Anakin asked for information of Sundari's docking log and he wondered how he was going to tell Anakin that his master was gone. Grandmaster Yoda entered his ship once more and hesitantly ventured to Anakin's Venator class Star Destroyer. As he saw Anakin and Ahsoka stood around a hollow table with several clone commanders, the somber look on Yoda's face told Anakin all he needed to know, but Yoda still informed Anakin that Obi-Wan had been lost to the Sith. Anakin's mechanical hand clenched before punching the table beneath him, and he lifted everyone around him off of the ground as he felt the dark side taking over within him. Eventually, Yoda is able to stop Anakin from causing any further damage, placing him in a force-induced sleep, then lifted him to the medical bay, worried that he had acted in the wrong by telling Anakin the truth. As Anakin eventually woke up, his eyes were no longer glowing, but were full of despair and sorrow for the loss of Obi-Wan, and he vowed to protect everyone around him. Ordering the clone navigational officers to direct the ship back to Coruscant, Anakin was left in his quarters alone. Whilst his former apprentice thought that he was dead or captured, Obi-Wan had in fact been training his new dark side powers, under the tutelage of Count Dooku. Unfortunately for the Sith, he received a surprising transmission from his master Darth Sidious, and he bowed to the Dark Lord of the Sith. Obi-Wan hid in the shadows of his castle, and saw Dooku lifted into the air with the Force from across the galaxy, as Sidious sensed some form of treachery. Dooku pleaded with his master that this was not true, and Sidious would soon arrive to determine the truth. Even without the orders of his new master, Obi-Wan left quickly in his ship, and soon the space that he had occupied is replaced by that of General Grievous' starfighter. Dooku had cleverly decided to use Grievous as a potential sacrifice, where his master to truly detect his treachery, and soon he would find out, as Sidious' shuttle land outside of his palace. The Sith Lord told his apprentice to rise from the floor, and beckoned him inside the palace, reporting of an unusual occurrence on Coruscant, of the bombing of the Jedi Temple. Dooku suggests using this to their advantage, and usher Sidious inside, where Grievous is waiting for them. The Sith Lord had forgotten about his suspicions of Dooku, and ordered the cyborg to move their base on Coruscant, and trap Obi-Wan Kenobi, who the Jedi had been searching for. As the command of the droid army departed, Dooku breathed a sigh of relief, as his master had not discovered his plans with Kenobi yet. Contacting Grievous in his ship, Dooku instructed his droid general to fail in his attempt to apprehend Obi-Wan, and instead remain in hiding until ordered to emerge. Back on Coruscant, the Jedi had in fact diverted most of their resources into discovering the assailant behind the bombing of the Jedi Temple, resigned to losing Obi-Wan, but not Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano. The two Jedi had refused to give up, and they decided that if Yoda had been right about Obi-Wan being in the hands of the Sith, they would find one. The clones of the 501st Legion and 212th Battalion gather together, and Anakin divides them to search the galaxy for Dooku. Placing themselves above Coruscant, they receive a transmission from Commander Cody of an attack on their fleet, and worryingly, they recognise the attack strategy to be one of Obi-Wan's. Anakin and Ahsoka take their starfighters across to the Outer Rim, trailed by Captain Rex leading a group of Republic cruisers, finding that most of Cody's fleet was burning. Anakin orders Rex to rescue Commander Cody and the rest of the 212th Battalion, whilst he and Ahsoka found out how they had employed Obi-Wan's strategies. The two Jedi slide into the hangar bay and defeat the B2 super battle droids until they see a terrifying sight. Obi-Wan was indeed alive and his eyes were bearing into their souls with darkness. Anakin could not believe that his rule abiding master had turned to the dark side and before he could talk to him, Obi-Wan accused Anakin and the Jedi for causing him a lifelong period of pain. Igniting his blade, he aggressively attacked Anakin, who was taken aback by the slightly different style of lightsaber combat from his old master. Their former master and apprentice countered each other's power, whilst Ahsoka tried to get in any hits she could, before the Jedi managed to push Obi-Wan into a series of flames, created by Rex's fleet. Leaving the burning ship, Anakin and Ahsoka departed into their starfighters, and back to Coruscant, where they are met by an annoyed Master Windu, scolding the two Jedi for leaving the planet. Yoda, on the other hand, asks if Anakin had got the answers that he wanted, and Anakin nodded, finally accepting that Obi-Wan was now a Sith. Aboard a burning Separatist destroyer, Count Dooku had soon arrived in the blazing inferno aboard his solar sailor, sensing his new apprentice was in danger. 
as he effortlessly landed amidst the destroyed droids. He heard the groans of pain from the smoke and used the force to drag out the injured Obi-Wan. The Count of Sereno took the former Jedi Council member to a secret laboratory on the planet of Geonosis, utilising advanced medical methods to reconstruct Obi-Wan, and he eventually rose from his bed. Obi-Wan was now fully charged by hate and pain, and used the force to shake the room, then destroy all of the droids. Dooku cackled as he felt that he was now better prepared to kill Sidious, and ordered Grievous to do what he did best, and cause chaos. The Cyborg General was given the Nexus Route coordinates to speed his way to Coruscant along with his fleet, and hovering above the airspace, begins a surprise attack on the Galactic City. Sidious is furious at Dooku and Grievous, but they ignore his orders and go for the Senate building. Dooku decided that now was the time to betray his master, and after Grievous had begun his attack, led Obi-Wan to the surface of the planet. Sidious had to reveal his hand, taken by surprise by his apprentice, and unleashed Order 66. Inside the Jedi Temple, the Jedi had been occupied with its recent bombing, and the hangar had not been fully repaired. In spite of this, most of the Jedi able to escape in their starfighters, and Anakin led a group of Jedi to rescue the Senators. Managing to rescue most of the politicians, Anakin and Ahsoka next go to the Chancellor's office, still unaware that he had been responsible for a lot of the damage to their order. As Palpatine turned around to greet the two Jedi in his chair, Anakin felt something different from his old friend, and the Force was screaming at him that danger was imminent. Palpatine's eyes narrowed as he knew that Dooku's betrayal had vanquished his plans to make Anakin his apprentice, and he sent a powerful lightning attack at Ahsoka, but Anakin blocks it with his blade before impact. Leaping out of the room through the roof, Palpatine realised that Grievous was still under his control, not Dooku, so orders him to turn upon his lightsaber master. In the temple, the sudden turn of Grievous almost catches Dooku off guard, but he is saved by the intervention of Obi-Wan. The Jedi Master defeated most of his old friends, and set about dissecting his master's creation, blending his old Jedi teachings with Sith power, cutting Grievous' limbs with Dooku's help. Feeling possessed by the dark side, Obi-Wan is greeted by Darth Sidious, who proceeded to torture Dooku with the Force, regarding his attempts to deceive him as feeble. Obi-Wan twirled his blade and lunged at Sidious, but soon found himself retreating very quickly into the waiting blades of Anakin and Ahsoka. From the ground, Dooku had recovered from his suffering and helped Obi-Wan as he saw Yoda and Mace Windu battling the Dark Lord of the Sith. The two Jedi Council members had seen those around them fall and they had to maintain the reputation of their precious order. Yoda was able to match anything that Sidious threw towards him, but without Windu's customary vapad, they would have not stood a chance. Disarming the Supreme Chancellor, the Master of the Order then sliced his head cleanly off of his neck as Yoda deflected the hits from the remaining clone troopers before tending to the injured Ahsoka. Windu then joins Anakin, managing to drag Obi-Wan away and Anakin cuts off the arms of Dooku, then decapitates him. Joining Windu, the Karoon Master was reluctant to fight his old Jedi friend, but Anakin had no such fear, even if it was his former master, piercing his bright blue blade into Obi-Wan's chest. The Sith did not collapse however, and Anakin's eyes widened in shock as he is pushed back into a pillar, with Obi-Wan fueled by his pain. Anakin shook his head from the fall, watching in surprise as bo had travelled from Mandalore, having wanted the services of the Jedi, and threw a hollow projector onto the floor. The figure of Satine appeared, mesmerising Obi-Wan, and the Duchess in one of her last recordings before her death, told Obi-Wan to let go of his hate, and the former Jedi Master finally fell to the floor. Holding Obi-Wan in his arms, Anakin howled into the Coruscant breeze, but at last, his master could be at peace with himself. Walking into the Jedi Temple Halls of Healing, Anakin did have some good news, in that Ahsoka had survived along with his secret wife Senator Padme Amidal of Naboo, and surrounded by the remnants of the Jedi Order, they had to rebuild to make Obi-Wan proud. That is it for What If Obi-Wan Turned to the Dark Side After the Death of Satine. If you enjoyed this what if, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel for more tips, as well as on my other channel what if films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.